Growth hormone secretagogues like MK677, the GHRPs, and the morellans may suppress your testosterone, and in this video, I'll tell you why. Before I do, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment for the algorithm if you can. Let's begin. MK677, the GHRPs, 2 and 6 and so on, and the morellans in general, are ghrelin mimetics. They're not... They're called growth hormone secretagogues because ghrelin was not discovered at the time that their receptor was discovered. But in reality, what they do is function like ghrelin. Now, in the body, we have several forms of ghrelin, and it's unclear exactly to what degree MK677, for example, mimics certain forms. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about ghrelin's activities in the body, since these uh, molecules mimic the activity of ghrelin in general. Now, just to be clear so that you understand, Ghrelin signals at the growth hormone secretagogue receptor and growth hormone releasing hormone also signals there. That's the commonality that they have. But ghrelin has many more diverse impacts and slightly different impacts on pituitary function, on gonadal function, and on steroidogenesis. Ghrelin actually increases the activity of the pituitary uh, in respect to several hormones. So for example, regarding the stress adrenal axis, Ghrelin activity actually increases the uh, activity, the secretion of adrenocorticotropic ho releasing hormone cells in the pituitary. And in doing so, it also causes the hypertrophy and proliferation of those cells, potentially making the brain better able to signal to the adrenals for cort cortisol synthesis in hormones and corticosterone synthesis in rodents. Interestingly, it does this it has this effect on stress hormones as significantly as the opioid antagonist naloxone does. Ghrelin also increases the secretion of T4 and decreases the secretion of TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Finally, it increases the synthesis of prolactin, not as much as dopamine antagonists do, but as much as, for example, arginine does. But what's much more interesting is ghrelin's effect on steroidogenesis which is inhibitory at several central and peripheral levels. Beginning at the highest point in the synthesis of, of steroids in the human body, ghrelin actually inhibits the mRNA transcription of kispeptin in the hypothalamus. Now remember, the hypothalamus produces gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which the pituitary in, in response produces LH and FSH consequently. Now what ghrelin does is make the pituitary produce less LH in response to a certain amount of gonad gonadotropin releasing hormone. It makes the pituitary less responsive in regards to LH and potentially more sensitive in regards to FSH. As a whole, what it does is reduce LH pulse uh, intensity and delay the pulses as well. And some studies will show that it also decreases FSH uh, synthesis as well, but this is a little bit more controversial. Interestingly, it abolishes naloxone, the opioid antagonist, effect on steroidogenesis, uh, specifically on LH secretion. This is a subject I'll discuss in a future video on the opioid receptors effects on steroidogenesis. Ghrelin is so potent at inhibiting steroidogenesis that it can actually delay puberty in animals. In addition to ghrelin's uh, impacts on LH and FSH, the hormones that the pituitary sends to the gonads to produce testosterone and differentiate and proliferate sperm, ghrelin actually has local effects at the gonads as well. Leydig cells that respond to LH and Sertoli cells that respond to FSH both have ghrelin receptors and ghrelin locally synthesized there. Or, I don't know if it's locally synthesized, but at the very least ghrelin is active at the gonads and the receptors exist there as well. So as you can imagine, this is several levels of inhibition. Inhibition at the, pitu at the hypothalamus, inhibition at the pituitary, and inhibition at the gonads. Several levels of um, inhibition of steroidogenesis in humans and rodents. So because of all these actions, beginning at the hypothalamus, then going to the pituitary, then locally at the gonads, ghrelin inhibits testosterone synthesis. Interestingly, the inhibition of testosterone synthesis is more extreme when animals, for example, rodents, are calorically restricted and given ghrelin. Anyway, this was a little long-winded, but the point is that ghrelin, the hunger hormone, and its mimetics likely all inhibit steroidogenesis at several le levels of the body, beginning with the hypothalamus, to the pituitary, to the locally at the gonads. And if you're not somebody that replaces either your hormones like testosterone or your hormones from the brain like luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone, you're likely someone that can become suppressed from taking ghrelin mimetics. And it's probably not a good choice to bridge between cycles and not a good choice for naturals. Anyway guys, thank you for bearing with me. I think this was the first video produced on this subject, but I'm not quite sure. 
Let me know if it was interesting to you in the comment section below and I'll speak to you soon.